say that you know his policy is is, is all very well you know to, to invest in the long term but you know in the last if you thought, and then everybody takes the example of of a, of a bad year to start like 2011 with buying gold for example you know i haven't made any money for 10 years and i could have made thousands or ten hundreds of thousands of percent on bitcoin etc but first of all i'm not I'm not an investor uh, well, that has uh, the benefit of hindsight, and I don't think anybody does. So, so people who are unhappy were about what they didn't do, you know, that, that I feel sorry for them. Now, yeah. you have to remember that investment markets have been incredibly easy, certainly for the last 50 years. Um, and I, I, I wrote an article uh, long time ago, somebody, uh, or a few years ago, somebody who started investing in, uh, or his grandparents started in 1945, and they, and, and they just bought stocks and stocks and stocks all the way, uh, you know, since 45, and then the, the, the person, um, and then when he grew up, he, he put all his money into stocks, and he's made a lot of money. Uh, and, you know, the market has gone down like in, in 1987, which I remember very well. You know, it went down, depending on the country, 50 to 70 percent. Um, uh, and then in 2000, it crashed. In 2008, it crashed, et cetera. And, you know, people who, who say that it's always right to be uh, long, of course, they are right. Because if they're just sitting on it and, and, and never panicking, it's a, since so much fake money has been created, for, certainly for 50 years or even longer, um, then it's, it, it's, the, 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 it's been made up by, by inflation. And people, of course, ne ne never measure their money in real terms. People measure like Americans measure it in dollar terms. Now, I will tell uh, Americans that um, I started my working life in 1969 in Switzerland. Um, since then, the dollar has lost 80% against the Swiss franc, 80%. So, so why don't you, so when you measure your money in, in dollars, yeah, it looks good, but if you measure it in a real currency, as, as a more stable currency, um, you, you've actually, uh, you've not made any money at all. And the same, uh, if you measure it in, in real, real money, gold, um, you've lost 97% since 1971. Uh, so therefore, but it looks good, it, you know, you, you, buy, you buy your assets, especially if you're American, for example, and most countries is the same, but, but you know, the old currencies are weak, some more than others, uh, you, you buy it in a, and measure it in a currency that is constantly going down in value. And so, so you're, you're, the wealth that you, are, you believe you have is an illusion. Uh, but still, um, it's people have in nominal terms, not in real terms, made massive amounts of money in stock markets, in property markets, um, in bond markets uh, in the last uh, up to 50 years. So therefore, it's been so easy, they never had to worry about corrections. Um, and uh, so therefore, people like myself who worry about risks, of course, if you are interested in short-term gains, you're losing out. I'm not worried about that uh, uh, because, oh, sure, if you can have a portfolio, you, you don't have to put everything into gold. You put some into stocks or some into gold, etc., like you're doing. Um, but, you know, and then you get these occasions like in 1929 when the market collapsed 90% in the U.S., the Dow, um, and it took 25 years to recover. Mm. You know, we, no, nobody living today has ever experienced a long-term uh, bear market. Nobody understands risk today. Nobody understands a bear market if they're not really stupid speculators and put all the money on black. But, but if they have a, a spread portfo portfolio of investments, nobody's, ever, nobody's lost money for, for at least 50 years or even a, a lot longer. Um, and, and therefore, you know, you don't, that, therefore it's, you, it works to speculate today. But, you know, you saw in, I, I remember in 99, I was, uh, I had uh, a stake in a, a friend of mine built up an e-tech e company, tech company. Um, and I said to him in, in 99, we've got to sell. Uh, this is a bubble. Uh, and uh, so we sold it in early 2000s to a Nasdaq quoted company. And uh, I said, we can't take stock. Or if we take stock, we have to be allowed to sell it straight away. I don't want to hold on to it. Yeah. So I saw the risk. The market went down 80%, as you know. 
a lot of companies disappeared. The company that uh, that bought uh, our company um, in the end went bankrupt. They bought lots of businesses, uh, and uh, you know they, uh, it was all a bubble. So you know, and and in '99, if you remember, everyone was an expert. Every single investor, every every you know every every shop assist, everybody speculated in Nasdaq. Uh, you know, my <laughs> I had a, an aunt who she's dead now, uh, who who lived in, in Florida and America, and she never bought stocks in her life, but she was sitting in front of the television uh, uh, and watching prices all day long and buying stocks. And and, and my mother told her, "Say, yeah, she's making so much money. She's making so much money, and now she's so good at it. She's teaching her cleaner, her cleaning lady, also to invest in stocks." <laughs> <laughs> and that was, <laughs> that was eureka for me, yes. And then, of course, as I said, the market crashed eighty percent. So, you know, if if, if you're lucky and, and get out in time, nobody does. Though most people lost a lot of money on, on the on the Nasdaq, and we are in that same situation now. But you know, I believe that we are at the end of a very long cycle. I don't know. Historians will tell us if this was only a three hundred year cycle or if it was a two thousand year cycle. I don't know, uh, and we'll find out, or, or, or future generations will find out. But by, but, but uh, cycles don't die overnight. That's the thing. And you know, so I've been worrying about risks for a while. The risks are getting bigger by the day, but it's actually you know the world hasn't collapsed yet. But that's not what the way we look at markets and, and wealth protection. That's not what it's about. It's all about you know, put put some part to, or whatever it's this percentage you uh, you decide into wealth protection assets like like for example uh, precious metals, and then forget about it. And then you use other parts of, of, of your of your wealth at, uh, to invest with uh, a shorter term. It's just, and then, and then you know. And so don't take more risk than you can sleep well at night and that you prepared for at some point this market. In my view, stocks and bonds and property will go down at least 90 percent in real terms, uh, and uh, which is also measured against gold. That will happen at some point. You know, it could be tomorrow it could be in five years time. I don't know. It doesn't matter. Yeah, that's the key right there. It doesn't matter. It doesn't matter. And, you know, be cautious of how much energy you spend trying to make sense or find logic in these cycles and predict, as you said, is this an 80 year cycle, a 300 year cycle, a 2000? It doesn't really matter. Right. No. And <clears throat> I get why the euphoria continues because, you know, at the front end of this conversation, we talked about it's not different this time. Right. These cycles will yeah. continue. Every fiat currency in the history of fiat currencies has eventually collapsed to zero. This time it won't be different. But you could take that same narrative to an investor who's been in the market for 15 years. Right. And what do they know about the markets? Well, they know they go up. Right. Sometimes they correct and then they go up again. Right. And that recency yeah. bias is very, very influential. But you could even dial that back to the 50s and say, what do markets do? Well, they go up. Sometimes they correct, but then they go up again, right? And you you said it, you know, 1929, that was a 25-year recession. But after that, it's been, relatively speaking, an extended bull market yeah. with some deep corrections and horrifying ones. But you could have- uh, Can I just interrupt? Yeah, that dates back to the Fed, of course. Since <laughs> the Fed was created, we've had this money creation, which which has been spectacular. So, so uh, you know, uh, that's why it's been easy. Sorry, I- Right, but, yeah. But that's where it stems from. That's that is the the catalyst and and I just I understand investors' mindsets who are listening to, you know, uh, some of the gurus in the space who are predicting the real crash is coming, but they've been predicting the real crash is coming since the '80s or earlier, since the '70s and Nixon. And so those investors can look at those narratives and say, "You're telling me this crash is going to be different." Well, you know, you've been saying that for two, three decades at this point, I don't yeah. believe you, right? Markets go up, that's what I know, right? Which yeah. which is the struggle yeah, that, right. that people face, absolutely. right? It's hard yeah, to like, absolutely. Yeah, navigate absolutely. that. Absolutely. You know, my answer to that is you don't know, right? You just don't know. And because you don't know, make sure you have some kind of an insurance policy in place, that like sovereign insurance policy. So you, you can ensure that your personal sovereignty, that you're good, you know, no matter what happens out there, you need to have something in place that puts the peace of mind in your brain that knows I'm good. No matter what happens, I'm good because I've got yeah. my personal insurance policy, right? Mm. Yeah. 
Absolutely. Yeah. So from that point, you know, my answer to that is you don't know, right? You just don't know. And because you don't know, make sure you have some kind of an insurance policy in place that like sovereign insurance policy. So you, you can ensure that your personal sovereignty, that you're good, you know, no matter what happens out there, you, you need to have something in place that puts the peace of mind in your brain that knows I'm good. No matter what happens, I'm good because I've got yeah. my personal insurance policy, right? Mm. Yeah. Absolutely. Yeah. So from that point of view, it's very simple. And then, you know, the, the, the uh, um, which, no problem if people want to speculate, but just don't speculate with all your money because it's uh, nobody understands that it's just been too easy now with, you know, and the money printing, uh, printing is accelerating. And, you know, the way we look at it is not, it's not real money. It's just air. And, and, and when that, the value of that, you know, of those bubble assets implode, you know, so will the debt. Um, and that's when at some point this will happen. I don't know. I think it could happen within five years, but um, I, uh, I could be wrong. But I think the risk is there. The risk is enormous. We've never seen. We, there's never been a situation in, in history, as far as I know, where you have this as a global problem. It's not one country anymore, not even one con continent. It's the whole world. It's never happened before. You know, the, the, before, if, if Argentina defaulted or, or one country, there was no problem. The, the, it was written off by all the countries and, and, and they went on. Um, when Germany had um, hyperinflation, uh, again, um, the, 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 you know, it was, people could write off the debts and, and they had to in the end. Uh, uh, but, you know, that created other problems, of course, with war, et cetera. Uh, so so where, but we've never seen a situation in history when every a major country in the world is running deficits and running up debts um, uh, at a level uh, that, that is, uh, which is unprecedented. So that's the, that's the risk we talk, talk about now. And it's not just America uh, or, or Europe. It's, you know, it, it is uh, the, the, the Asia, China, of course, uh, emerging markets, et cetera. So it's, it's worldwide. It's, that's why we're looking at a much bigger problem. Yeah, with a level of globalization that obviously we've never experienced before and everything is so much more reliant on everything else, right? The house of cards is very real. Hey guys, three last things. First, if you enjoy my interviews and would like a bit more, you can subscribe to my Friday newsletter. It's free and the comment to subscribe is right beneath this video in that pinned comment. In this newsletter, I share my key lessons learned, takeaways, and any actions that I might be taking in the market as a consequence of what I've learned on the show. Second, when I started a YouTube channel, I never anticipated generating any advertising revenue. But coincidentally, I do now, which is awesome. And so what I've decided to do is donate this to an organization that is very close to my heart called Zero Ceiling. Their mission is to end youth homelessness. The way they do this is by providing young people experiencing homelessness with supportive housing, employment, professional support, life skills, and outdoor adventure. Because often young people in urban centers with no resources will never get the opportunity to experience wild places, nature that can be so transformational and absolutely was for me. Third, if you prefer to listen to my content, you can now find us wherever you listen to podcasts. Just search for The Jay Martin Show.